Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and today I'm answering a question I've gotten a couple of times recently about raw cat food, and that is if you are working full time or if you have to be out of the house all day, then how do you go about feeding your cats raw cat food? Just a reminder, if you're new here, I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a vet tech. I'm not a medical professional of any sort in the veterinary field. I'm an obsessive independent researcher. I work in the field of health and wellness and nutrition for humans, and arguably, most importantly, for the subject matter of this video and the, I think, over 200 videos that I've shared thus far on our Cat Stuff playlist here on YouTube, I am a devoted kitty mama who it started off with one cat, and then by choice I adopted a brother for my one cat, and not by choice, kind of by fate, I became the foster fail mama, I guess it's safe to say at this point, of Betty and Ronan, which it's kind of more of like a feral fail because she literally brought me her kittens to my backyard from wherever she was staying. Anyway, I always include a disclaimer in the descriptions of all my videos on the website catladyfitness.com and everywhere. But just to remind you guys, that is where I am coming from when I share this information, not advice, but this information that may hopefully be helpful to some of you out there. So years ago, there was a good chunk period of time where it was just Puppy, my first cat, and myself, and I would leave the house for at least 12 hours a day, at least four or five days a week. Now, I do feed him two meals a day, which is something strongly suggested if you are feeding your cats raw food. Sometimes people might go with three meals a day, and then you also have to consider the age of your cat, which I'll get into in just a minute. But Puppy was already an adult cat, so he got his two meals of raw cat food a day, and I would simply leave his breakfast right before I left in the morning, which could be anywhere between 6 and 9 a.m., depending on the day. And then as soon as I got home at night, which was usually anywhere between 7 and 9 p.m., the first thing I would do would be to feed him his dinner. And if you are wondering about the right portion size for your cat, or even things like how to warm up raw cat food, or, or really almost every question you can think of, there's a strong chance that I have a video dedicated to that question, if not within a Q&A video, within the Cat Stuff playlist here on YouTube, or you can just see it directly at catladyfitness.com slash videos. This really worked out great for us. He was healthy. He was happy. I felt horrible for leaving him all day long, as a lot of fur baby parents do, especially because this whole span of time, this was actually before I filmed that video that has like, I don't know, 8 million views or something right now about, maybe it's how you found this channel, about a cat missing his owner and how puppy cried when I left the house for just 10 minutes. It sounded like I, I, I can't even watch it. I mean, it's absolutely heartbreaking. If you've seen it, you know. That being said, Puppy was already at least five or six years old at this time, which means he was an adult cat, which means that he was good on those two meals a day. And we still do that to this day. That is our feeding schedule because in my perspective, in my research, and in our own personal experience, that is the ideal mealtime frequency to have for Puppy and even for Alfred. Now, when it comes to kittens, it's a little bit different because kittens need to eat more frequently since they're still growing and they're still building their muscle, building their bodies. I also have a video about when you can start feeding kittens raw cat food as well as portion sizes and all that, but kittens do need to eat more frequently. So typically that's, depending on their age, at least three or four times a day. The older they get, the less frequent it has to be. But I would safely say up to at least one year old, you want your kitten to have access to food more than twice a day. So three times a day, ideally, when they're even younger than that, like let's say six months and under after they've finished weaning or nursing, you may even want to do four times a day or more, depending on how it fits in with your schedule. Fortunately, this year, or I should say last year, most of us were staying home most of the day. And fortunately, again, I work mainly from home and have for a couple of years now. And I did start feeding kitten Ronan raw food as soon as he weaned off of his mama, Betty. And I did happen to be home in the span of the day for the most part in order to 
provide him an extra meal if he needed it, or even some good high quality grain free treats. As many of you already know, there is no dry kibble in this house and I don't feed my cats dry kibble. However, that being said, if you do have a kitten who does need to eat more frequently to best benefit their health and their growth, it might not be a bad idea to get some high quality, grain free, high protein, soy free, dry kibble. And I do have a video about how to choose the best cat food in which I don't talk about dry kibble, but I do talk about the ingredients and things to look for when you're seeking out wet canned food. So I will say this, if you have a kitten at home and you are working away from home or you have to be out of the house for a good percentage of the day, if you work full time, if you're a healthcare worker, which I was at one point and you work 12 hour shifts, since there's no way that you could just put out raw food in the middle of the day. And since you definitely don't want to leave raw food in one of those automatic feeders that can open up at a certain time that you schedule it to. If you have a cat that's younger than eight to 12 months old, then you might want to get a high quality canned cat food to put in one of those automatic feeders to open up in the middle of the day. Either that or something that didn't exist at the time that I have now and that is so useful and so helpful that I've made a video about as well and spoken about tons of times is this Wopet pet camera and treat dispenser. Again, it's a treat dispenser. It doesn't replace a meal, but it's so cool because you can check in on your cats when you're out of the house. It has two-way audio. It has night vision. You can record video. You can take pictures and you can release treats. So this thing, I wish I would have had this when it was just puppy in the house and I could check in on him in the middle of the day and yeah, give him treats too, but also just kind of talk to him and, and probably really confuse his cat brain with all this technology, but it would have been a lot of peace of mind and it has proven very useful. Whenever I leave the house now, I actually use it. And speaking of a pet camera, I did receive a new one from a different company that it's called, I think, Pock Paw or something like that. And it does have additional features to the Woe Pet that I currently have in love. So I'm probably going to make a video coming up comparing the two to let you know which might be better in your household for your situation. Now, if you do feel comfortable giving your cat dry food, again, as long as it's of the best quality you can get, which would be grain-free, high protein, no additives or ingredients that are possibly harmful to your cat or could even prohibit them from absorbing the nutrients in the first place, then you can get one of those automatic food dispensers that will actually distribute a designated amount of dry kibble that you choose the portion of, which is really cool. Wopet, again, I mentioned this in a past video, this isn't sponsored or anything like that, but they did send me one of those, which I actually gifted to somebody with, with four dogs and they love it. But you can set this up to release food at any time that you schedule. And you can also actually schedule your voice behind it to say like, hey, it's lunchtime or whatever you want to say. This could be something you can look into if you just feel more comfortable feeding your cat in the middle of the day. Perhaps you notice that they aren't gaining weight as they should be, or even that they're losing weight, which you typically don't want if it's a kitten, especially under a year old, when all they should be doing is growing and becoming more strong and healthy. And again, you guys hear me say this a lot. Raw cat food is ideal. It is the best food that you can feed your cat but we are all doing the best we can at the same time, whether it's what you can afford, whether it's your schedule and when you need to work in order to afford and, and to facilitate taking care of your precious feline fur babies. So all that being said, it's super easy to keep your cats on a raw food diet if you work full time or if you're out of the house for a good span of the day on most days, since they would get ideally two meals anyway, once they've transitioned successfully. You just give them a plate before you leave in the morning and then as soon as you get home at night. If your cat's healthy and thriving, there should be absolutely no issue and this should be the schedule that you're following anyway. Keep in mind that every cat is different. Some can only go so long without a meal, otherwise their stomach gets too acidic. Maybe you'll notice them vomiting or spitting up some kind of 
liquidy, foamy situation, which I do need to make another video about that because that's been a common question as well. Some of your cats aren't adults yet. They're one year or younger, which means they do have to eat more frequently, in which case you can take heed of the suggestion to either give them wet canned food in one of those automatic opening feeders, which I also have a video about. I will link that one in the description below. That's also really good if you have multiple pets in the household because it reads your cat's or dog's microchip, or you can put a little tab on his or her collar, and that way the food dish only opens up for that solo pet. It's actually really cool and really convenient, and I bought one of those to put uh, dog's food in when puppy was staying in the same house as a dog for about a year or so. And puppy really wanted to get into that kibble, but saving grace was this device that only opened up for the dog. So that was really, really a great find. And if you're concerned about just leaving the raw food plate out in the morning and you leave the house before they actually finish the food, because sometimes they don't take it all in one go, especially with all of my cats, and I do need to make a video about this, they tend to kind of not be as ravenous at breakfast. So they might eat half their plate, walk away, come back, eat the other half later. Or I mean, sometimes it even takes them up to a couple of hours to finish that morning plate. However, more often than not at dinner time, they will lick that plate clean as soon as it's put down. So if you've noticed this in your cats, that is completely normal. And it is very individual depending on your cats. But that's something that I've noticed in four cats now that tends to be a pretty regular habit when it comes to how they eat their meals. And that might be something that you want to consider as well. So once you figure out your cat's entire portion that they should get for the day, maybe you want to give a third of that portion at breakfast time and then the other two thirds at dinner time when you know they're more likely to eat it fully to at least make sure that there won't be anything left over, which can happen sometimes. And even though you can't force your cats to finish their food, it takes some effort to make it homemade, which is what we do here. And you, you really, really want to do the best you can to encourage them to actually finish their plate. So if that means just splitting up the portion to be a little uneven between meal one and meal two, then that's how you have to adjust. And that's why it's really important to monitor your cats individually and figure out what benefits them best, what is most advantageous when it comes to the system that you are feeding them their raw food. Now, if it's a scenario where you live somewhere kind of more tropical, where maybe cockroaches or bugs or even, you know, other vermin are an issue for you to leave your food out and you're worried that that will kind of attract them or draw them in, then I can totally understand the hesitation of that food being out for even just an hour or two if your cat doesn't eat quickly. But again, that's a good way to test out. Perhaps you should make that breakfast meal a little bit smaller and then put the rest of their daily portion with the dinner meal. All right, guys, I hope that answered this question, which I've gotten from a couple of you and that this video helped you out. If it did, please do us a favor and click that thumbs up below. Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer that comment. And again, please make sure to check out catladyfitness.com. You'll be able to find the homemade, easy cat food recipe that we use, as well as different variations, how to figure out the best portion for your cat, talk about weight loss, raw food and kittens, all kinds of things that are in the cat stuff playlist. So please, 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 if you have any questions, make sure to check that cat stuff playlist first, which you can do here on YouTube or you can check it out at catladyfitness.com slash videos. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos about cat stuff, including a lot of raw cat food talk, feline nutrition, kitty care tips, and things for humans like recipes and workouts and fragrance reviews and stress management technique Tuesdays and anything else I feel like posting, then join the family and click that subscribe button below because we do put out a video at least once a week on Catter Day and usually more. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.